over the past couple of weeks, I have been giving my subscribers free one-on-one advice slash coaching calls with me. And this past week, I talked to Scott, a really talented oil painter and art YouTuber that wants to turn his art into a part-time side hustle kind of thing over the next couple of years. We talked about time management, how to grow his following online, and how to expand his business. I think you guys will get a lot out of this conversation. But before we dive into it, I do want to give a brief thank you to the sponsor of this video, Fiber Art. If you are interested in having your art woven into custom blankets and tapestries, stay tuned for that. But for now, let's go ahead and dive into my call with Scott. I'm at a weird spot where I have a really good job and I don't necessarily need to make a living off my art. Um, I would like to be an oil painter and sell paintings and do that and be on YouTube. I kind of have a long runway. I'm not necessarily looking for it to happen overnight. Um, I actually quite like my job a lot. I don't even necessarily have plans on leaving it right now, but I would obviously like to um, grow a business on YouTube, sell my art, that type of thing. So I guess I just had mostly questions about YouTube and about what, how else I can monetize some of my paint. Yeah, I think that's a really good spot to be in. I think like not having that pressure to go full time as fast as possible is really going to help you just like have more creativity and also just have better mental health with it. Yeah, the the job thing for me was kind of something that I stumbled into. Like I was, when I first kind of started walking down the path of like trying to do the art and stuff full time, I was definitely thinking that I want to do art full time. Yeah. You know, like everybody does. And then um, I kind of accidentally stumbled into the, the job, just worked out really well. And like I'm on the same page with my boss and they know that I'm doing the art and stuff. And if my art ends up taking off, I can like go down part time and stuff there if I want to. So it's just a good opportunity that um, it takes a lot of the pressure off of having to perform, I guess, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So let's talk. Let's talk YouTube and stuff. Um, absolutely. Let's do it. Um, OK, so right now I'm doing live streams. I've been doing them every day for like the past 160 something days. I've been doing them. I'm subscribed um, to you. I've been seeing them pop up and I'm like, dude, wow. <laughs> day like yeah. 156 or whatever. Holy shit. Yeah, it wasn't it didn't necessarily start out on purpose to do that yeah it was more to get myself into a habit of painting every day originally i was thinking that i would make a painting put out a video make a painting put out a video i'm kind of thinking now that maybe and i wanted your advice on this as i was writing yeah. other questions i kind of had some ideas but do you think that i should put out a video with every painting that i'm doing or do you think i should just keep on doing the live stream thing and put out a video like maybe once a month or once every two months when I thought I had a really good one. Looking at your videos compared to your streams, your videos are doing better than your streams in terms of views. Like the VODs for your streams are performing fine, but your videos are doing much better. Um, if I were you, I would think about, okay, can I use the footage that I'm recording and I'm broadcasting in the stream and turn that into a YouTube video and kind of accomplish two birds with one stone basically so like you're spending your time on stream recording content or at least parts of your stream is going to be a recorded video that you post in your channel um I think uh if you wanted to go more of the stream route and double down on that I think part of why your streams aren't doing as well in the VOD format is because they have all the same thumbnail I think yeah. that you should brand every single stream just like a video. It should have its own title. It should have its own thumbnail. Because right now, like for me, there's nothing like there's no the difference. The yeah, there's yeah. no difference between day, you know, two versus day 163. Um, but like you're making different content in all of those. It's just not reflected in the branding. And I think that's a missed opportunity. Gotcha. I think you're leaving money on the table for that. Yeah, you know what? When I first started doing it, I just, um, I basically tried to get everything out of the way for me saying no to doing a live stream that day. So I just prepped a whole bunch of thumbnails and I was just like, I'll just go, you know what I mean? And then I started marching down that path. But that's funny because I clicked on one of my streams the other day to see the things and it, it, it generated like a nice thumbnail and I was like, oh, I should switch to that. You know what I mean? And then, um, but that makes a lot of sense. Do you think I should make like a template that has like some sort of like my branding and then change the picture every time there are a couple of guys that i know that are doing streams and turning those into really fully branded youtube videos like longest solo ever um i know this guy he's like a music creator um i know him on discord he 
like really brands every single stream in VOD to be really unique. And I think that that's kind of the approach that I would go down. I would treat like the stream thumbnail and title just like you would a video. Try and have like the same kind of value prop, the same like, you know, picture of you with the painting or whatever, because they're performing well for you. Um, So like, why not replicate what's already working for your streams? I was thinking the exact same thing where I basically had to repurpose that footage into video. Um, But the other thing is, is that I think that streaming gives you the best connection with the viewer. Long form videos are second and short videos basically suck for that. Part of me wanting to do the streams is so that I'm a production machine for making paint. So I'm not necessarily trying to do something completely different on every stream. Like I was trying to paint something, I don't know, like a challenge or you know what I mean? I think that that might take away from why I originally, what like set me on that path, you know what I mean? I don't think that you should necessarily drop the make art every every day until I break um, title for every stream. I think any change to make your stream VODs a little more unique um, after you finish going live would be good. Whether that looks like making um, custom thumbnails for like, I don't know, 40% of them or something. Um, Even you could just do like, uh, let's say you're working on a painting and it's gonna take you like three weeks and you're gonna stream every single day for those three weeks. Take like some kind of photo of the painting in progress and be like, hey, like, you know, we're working on this still or this is this series, like episode, whatever for your stream VODs. Just any way to distinguish them would be good. I think that's good advice. Okay, so I originally started out and I was trying to think of a way to make myself into a basically just a production machine. Yeah. I have a full time job, so I don't necessarily have endless hours, right? Right. So if I'm going to do YouTube and make paintings, because painting needs to be my focus, yep. but I like doing YouTube too. If I can make it easy, I can do both. Um, I've got work, I've got family, and then that's like full schedule, yeah. right? Um, so I need to make this like efficient. So I was thinking, I'll make a painting, I'll record it, then I will have the footage from that painting, and that each painting goes into an individual, um, each painting gets made into an individual long form video and an individual short form video. Um, I'm kind of feeling a little bit crunched for time. I'm thinking that I might want to stop doing videos for each individual one and then just put out more produced videos spend that same amount of time editing or whatever, but put those more produced videos into like what you said, which was like, we like a hundred days of, I did 150 days of live streams is what I learned. Or I think you had a really good one. It was like, I spent, I painted for 1000 hours. I think that was another one that you gave me before. Yeah. Which would be a really strong, that would be a really strong video, right? Yeah. I for 1,000 hours and this is what happened. Yeah, I mean, like, your your power, like, your strong suit, I think, is in your consistency and the dedication that you put into your craft. And, like, you should leverage that any way that you can. In terms of, like, content advice, I totally agree with you. I think at this point, you should definitely double down on the quality and kind of ax the quantity a little bit and just focus on making really good stuff. Do you think that I should be aiming at other art? Like, because I know I didn't really want to, I know I don't really want to do, like, educational art content. I don't want to make tutorials. That's a better way of putting it. I don't really want to make painting tutorials. I kind of feel like I'm on the path of like learning myself right now. Um, I don't really feel like I want to be there. I just want to be on the path of learning. I just want to stay focused on that. But do you still think that I should be, I guess inevitably because I have an art channel, I'm going to be attracting other artists. Right? I think that it's probably yeah. the majority of your viewers. Um, I think that's true for most art channels. Uh, I think there is absolutely room for you to double down on trying to have artists as your target audience and not have like education be your focus. Um, What you could do is just focus, like double down on, I am leveling up my skills. I am learning things. Here is what I'm learning. Here is like how I'm learning it. And here, like this is the the pros and the cons and the successes and the failures Um, and kind of do it that way. So almost what you're doing is like personal development content um, for artists, basically. That's like kind yeah. of the thing that you're doing. I like I like that personal dev for artists. Yeah, and that's like a thing that I've been playing around with too. Like one of my most popular videos that I uploaded, um, the very last video I think that I uploaded last year was um, my how to make 2024 count video. And that was like very much like a um, personal development kind of video, just like a bunch of recycled B-roll footage for me, like half of the process yeah. of a painting. But it told a story, it had a message, and it did really well, I think, because it was almost storytelling focused with a small, like, actionable advice component to it. I would call that, like, a, a philosophy video. Yeah, almost, but that, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's the same thing yeah. that we're talking about. But I think that, that that's originally what I thought that each of my individual painting videos would be about. I thought that I would pick, like, some sort of, like, personal dev philosophy thing, 
and then put that out quick and dirty. Um, like I would, I would record a voiceover for say however long it took me to do the topic, but not fill it up with a bunch of fluff. So it was 20 minutes long, right? Like if it was five minutes, just talk about that. And then each painting footage would become that idea put out. But I guess that I could make it, like you said, personal dev for artists. Almost. Um, I almost think that you don't necessarily need to have it just be one painting process from start to finish. Like, um, in the video that I made, I you see half of the painting process, but a lot of it is just like random footage that I had. Um, the video still performed really fine. Um, you might not even need to do a painting from start to finish. When you have a story that you want to tell, you could pull all of your interesting shots from, you know, the past six months or the past, you know, however long you haven't made a video for yet, your huge library yeah. of footage that you have, and pull the most interesting bits from that and then put that in the video. Because you have the painting process from start to finish, shown in your streams, maybe in short form content too, maybe in like some videos, but you might not need to show like the entire painting process of start to finish um, and focus on more like the personal development philosophy aspect of the video and the branding. So I kind of feel that I'm between making like those quick and dirty personal depth philosophy videos or do I make them more edited kind of, I would say like challenge style videos where it was like, I streamed for 150 days, this is what happened. I painted for a thousand hours and this is what happened because I can't, I don't think that I have the um, capacity right now to end up doing both of those. Cause right now I'm trying to do both of those. Cause I have both those ideas Yeah, and uh, I'm not putting anything out because I can't make a decision between which way that I'm going. I think um, that you should definitely do the higher quality ones. I think that okay. is a thing worth trying for sure. Um, I also think that there might it might not be such a binary choice like you're thinking. Like you might be able to do the personal development philosophy videos in the higher quality format um, because eventually you're gonna run out of challenges. Um, or at least like you're not going to feel as compelled. Your audience might get tired by having some variety yeah. and occasionally doing like the higher quality videos that talk about like philosophy or your journey as an artist, aside from just the challenge component to it, might still work for you. And it might actually be the videos that do the best, depending on depending on how they turn out. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I yeah, think I guess you should focus on the quality. Talking out like talking it out right now with you is making me realize that it's not a binary choice. And that even if I did the... Even if I did the challenge videos, um, even if I did the challenge videos, then if I had time, I could still do the other one. Yeah, right? for sure. Because I, yeah, I have I all mean, the footage already. Yeah, if you're not uploading on a schedule, like a strict schedule, like, you know, uploading once a week or something, then you can upload whenever you want. And you have the streams as this a connection to your audience that is constant basically after we wrapped up talking about scott's youtube channel and his live stream we dove into the product and the business side of things trying to figure out what products scott could offer to his audience as an oil painter and how he could eventually expand his business beyond just his youtube channel but before we get into that I want to talk about the sponsor of this video. I genuinely think they are an incredible company. If you are interested in having your art woven into blankets or tapestries or even upholstery fabric, fiber art is going to be a great option for you. I recently got some of my own art turned into blankets. And I am really impressed with this quality. This is a sturdy blanket. It's so high quality. It's really cool to see like all of the colorful fringe. I don't know if you can see that. All of the colorful fringe and just the patterning. It's so cool. Their customer service was amazing. It was so easy to get this done. And uh, I'm gonna make a whole video on the process of this just for you guys so you can see how it all worked out. But. Fiber Art is an amazing manufacturer. If you want your art woven into blankets, tapestries, or upholstery fabric, you can easily set that up. You can have it like linked to your online store, be that Shopify, Squarespace, wherever. You can also order it like using their order desk platform. If you want to offer your your products on like conventions or art fairs or galleries or wherever. You can also order some for your friends or your family. It's it's a really cool service. With all of that, let's get right back into my call with Scott because it's not over yet. And I think honestly, we are getting to the best parts of this call. I was kind of looking at the next two or three years as being a development time for me. I want to get as good as I can at painting. I still feel like I have a lot of growth to do. I also feel like I'm already good enough to start selling stuff. I do sell stuff. Yeah. Not a lot of stuff. 
but I've been trying to more make a collection of paintings over the past year versus being versus trying to like make a painting and sell it. I have basically been doing zero marketing for the last year. Like I haven't, the people who have bought my paintings are people who like ask, can I buy that? And I say, yes. Like I didn't have a website for most of last year. I didn't have consistent pricing. I was just, I wasn't worried about that. I was worried about getting like 20 finished paintings together. Right now I have 15 on my website and I feel that this year though is the time when I need to switch from just making stuff into actually selling stuff now. I'm limited with the amount of time again that I can put into everything because obviously with doing YouTube, with doing paintings, with the job, all this stuff, um, I don't necessarily have endless hours to be making into product, but I would spend that time or the resources of like money to pay someone else to help me with stuff. If I had some good ideas on like um, things that I was going to be doing. So right now my plan is to, I get the scans for my stuff. I'm going to start an Etsy store so that I'm onto their thing using their SEO, their market. Um, and I'm going to sell prints on there. I don't think there's any better business card that I can have as an artist than somebody that really likes my stuff that has it in their house. And their friend comes over and goes, where's this? And they're, they're, oh, this guy's live stream. Check it out. Right. So I want to get stuff out into the world. So basically, I'm going to put my prints as low as I can where I'm still making money in case something happens. But I'm not necessarily trying to crush it on it. The other the idea that I had was like putting out some sort of like I, like a self-published book, maybe. But I was wondering if you had any other like, is there any other ideas that you had for me in regards to products like that, that I could scale with my assets? Yeah, I mean, like depending on like what kind of pieces you want it done, I feel like your work could really work well in like tapestries, maybe. If it was something maybe a little more like maybe not like with a person in frame or maybe, I don't know, maybe even with a person frame, you could do blankets. Like um, Fiber Art is a really great company. They sponsored the channel a couple of times. Yeah. Um, they're this company in North Carolina. They do like custom Jacquard loom, uh, like tapestries and blankets and stuff. And their stuff is really high quality. I feel like for you, prints, tapestries, um, like more like home decor kind of stuff is probably really going to be your strong suit for the kind of work that you make. Yeah. Allison was on the podcast. Yeah. She would like her stuff is just like, so there's a lot of stuff you can do with an illustrator style like hers. Yeah. And like you said, everybody always says children books and stuff like that's open to her. But like there's a lot of like whimsical type products that you could see that stuff live on very easily. Yeah. Right. Even like kids shirts and clothes like that. I don't know. I'm I think a little too close to my art to see it, which category it falls into. Like where does it fall or does it? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's kind of I think, what I'm like where I've got blinders up a little bit to it right now. Yeah. I mean, your work is very... <laughs> like traditional but not in like a it's not in like a bad way it's like just traditional in that like it's very kind of like classically um like done and oriented like you want to be much more of like a um I don't know like or like a Rembrandt than like someone that does children's books right like it's it's you're on a different part of the spectrum I feel like tapestries could work well I also feel like if you wanted to license things um you could yeah. explore having your artwork on um like wine labels or something or something a little bit more like high end because I feel yeah. like your work is you know you've got all of these like gorgeous women like going through like fields and stuff and like interacting with nature and that feels luxury to me um that feels like um more serious more high end and I feel like if you wanted to branch out probably you're going to have to partner with companies to be on their already existing luxury products um which I think is a very good, like art licensing is a very profitable if you, you know, have the right companies and the right relationships, passive income stream. Yeah, I'm super open to that. I'm, I'm super attracted to that idea. I think you gave me some clarity there, but it's tough for me to understand exactly where does that stuff fall into? Like, is it yoga brands? Is it like that kind of like hippie, like new age lifestyle? Like it's because like, I agree with you that I have more of a traditional style, but I also feel that there's something about my stuff that's contemporary. Yeah. Because obviously it's like, it's mostly women in dresses and stuff, right? And I think that I paint a lot of like, um, femininity, femininity and nature type of thing. Your work could work well for like old money brands, right? Like, like generational wealth brands. Um, 
like the, you know, Maine, Massachusetts, Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard kind of crowd could be attracted to your stuff. And if I were you, I would almost look into contacting like maybe um, small wine labels in your area or in like that kind of like expensive zip code parts of the u.s those neighborhoods like yeah. in martha's vineyard and see if they would be interested in you designing like a series of wine labels or something for them and like licensing your art to them directly so smaller companies um i think are going to be more open to this and especially if their wine labels are like kind of subpar and you can send them a mock-up with their branding and your art on it and already like you know, they can see the vision immediately. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's actually, there's, I'm like an hour out of Vancouver. Yeah. And it's, there's a lot of like yuppie people. I'm actually, I'm, I'm between Vancouver and like two hours the other way is um, like the wine country where everybody goes. Oh, yeah. Before we go into some other stuff, is there any other product that you think that I should be looking into or that you think would be good in the future? This is kind of a shot in the dark, but... I almost think that working with um, clothing brands for advertising campaigns and marketing material could be interesting. Um, like painting, like, you know, women wearing their dresses in nature. Um, I wonder what that would be like because you have such a good grasp on clothing and fashion um, that leaning more into that could be an interesting experience. But maybe that's not the thing that you want. Um, but I do think that would... If you wanted to build a brand as an artist where your artwork is seen on that, like, you know, old money kind of stuff, I feel like that could also be an interesting um, project to to try and get into eventually. Um, I was 100% thinking clothing brands already. Yeah, great. Yeah, that was something I was thinking about. But for some reason, I don't know why until like right now when we're talking, I was like stuck in my head of like, I don't know any other brands other than like American Eagle. Like I don't like I, I do, but I don't know why. Like I was thinking that's what I was thinking. You know what I mean? Because I was thinking like corporate, like what type of like whatever. Yeah. But you're right. I should probably find some like more independent, like hiking or yoga or yep. like that type of thing. Yeah. They would also like that. But then, as you were saying, also like the not that there's custom dress people, but like that's kind of there are totally custom yeah. dress people, um, especially on Etsy. Um, that's where, I, that's where I buy my costumes from. Nice. What do you think I should, if I was going to approach a company like that, what do you think that I would be presenting them to use my stuff in their advertisement? Like, I know you said the wine label, you could actually be on the wine label, right? Like, yeah, sure. Um, but like to be in their advertisements to be part of like an advertising campaign type of thing around like, you know, that's kind of what, I, that's how I am, had imagined it. But like, what do you think? I think you could customize the pitch a lot. You could be like, okay, like here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna create a series of five original paintings for you. You can display them in your flagship store um, and they can, you know, maybe I rent them out to you for a certain period of time or you buy them outright. I would also license like the digital copies, like digital files of the artwork for you to put on marketing material. So that means um, like the extra stuff they include in like, um, like, you know, like really nice brands will put your, your clothes in like a gift bag and have like a little like, you know, coupon code or whatever. You could have yeah. that be like on promotional material. You could have it be on the gifts bag, on the gift bags, on the packaging, on the in-store displays. Um, really make it super custom. Like you are branding yourself as um, like a luxury experience for these brands. Um, someone who offers them a ton of value creatively and makes their customers feel oh like this is an expensive environment this is an environment where um people put a lot of thought and design into how this store makes me feel and how this brand makes me feel okay so um part of my thing is selling original painting so i need to get people in the door and i want to grow my email list so i've been looking a lot into like getting leads for businesses and stuff and it's always good to have like a lead magnet that you can offer as part of like something free to opt in on. So like for you, it's a little bit easier because you're doing our business stuff. But I was wondering if you had any ideas for me about what type of digital product that I could make that would be a good lead magnet for getting people in on my list. There's this thing in email marketing called like segmenting, right? Like parts of your audience are going to be different. Um, I think for your collector base, probably I would do a very simple lead magnet, something like digital wallpapers or something of, of your work. 
Um, or you don't do a lead magnet and you just say, hey, if you sign up for this email list, you get early access to my paintings as soon as they go live. Um, as, so- as soon as like they are done and for sale, maybe even before they're like fully dried, um, you try and sell them to your email list. And they hear things first and that's the pitch. If you wanted to have a part of your business be for the segment of your audience that is inevitably going to be artists, then maybe you have something more stream focused. So like um, your top 10 things that you're gonna need to start streaming as an artist or like your setup or the gear recommendations that you have. And then you basically have, you know, two different kinds of groups on your email list for different purposes. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good idea. I was definitely caught on one thing and I was having some hesitations there because I was like, there's different, it's different people, right? That's the problem with making generalized content a lot of time is that it's very hard to um, narrow in there and figure out what's going on. I guess that if I did those, we use the phrase like art biz dev, I guess that those same musings that would become voiceovers could be little emails to go out to those people collectors would get more i got another painting done here it is i'm going to update my website in two months but you guys can get it early for five percent off or whatever right for being part of the email list that was a simple answer i was i don't know what i was expecting <laughs> that's a bit more complicated i mean it, been, it, 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 i do this to myself yeah. all the time i do this to myself all the time having these sessions is like help for me too because then it's like oh like i should consider taking my own advice <laughs> totally i know it's just really tough to like because you're out here swinging alone most of the time like we have the discord and stuff but it's just not the same thing where it's like everybody will answer your question but they're answering it from their perspective um somebody was asking for painting advice the other day and i asked like how do you paint and they're like i don't know and i'm like well then i can't help you right yeah because otherwise i'm just gonna tell you how i paint paint back to front dark light thin to thick whatever like this has helped a lot even just for me to talk out stuff and then you nudging in the right direction definitely um gave me a lot of things the, that, I found that super interesting that you talked about the licensing thing too, because that's something that I've thought about for a, a that's something that I thought about for a long time. I just didn't, I just don't know how to make it happen. But I guess um, I'm also realizing that as I'm talking it out that I don't need to make that happen this year. Even. Yeah, like that's that's more of a long play, right? Absolutely. I mean, I think we're very <laughs> like we're very aligned the two of us in terms of like our art styles are both kind of traditional or like. Um, yeah. I'm going to be going for like the same stuff that you are. Like I want my art on wine labels, candles, whatever. But also that's, I don't have the portfolio and the style consistency to be able to pitch that right now. I need to work on that first, but that is like the desired end goal for a lot of my portfolio. I want it to be, you know, on products. I think that would be so cool. Um, but yeah, it's, that's, we're playing the long game and that's just how it is. All right, so that was my call with Scott. I hope that you guys really enjoyed it. If you want to apply for one of these calls with me, there's a form that you can fill out linked in the description. Please also check out Fiber Art, the sponsor of this video. They are an amazing company. I was so happy to work with them. Let me know what you think about this call in the comments. Make sure to like, subscribe, all of that stuff. You know what to do. Friendly reminder that I do sell prints on my imprint storefront. I also have Notion templates and stuff on my online shop, so go check that out and... Yeah. All right. That's it for me. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.